Good day there viewers, my name is Cliff and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. This episode is a lot different than my previous episodes where you actually see me faceting gems. In point of fact, this episode will apply for both those people who are learning to cut gemstones and for those people who are simply interested in buying gems. So what you see as I'm panning around with my camera are gemstones that I've found or prospected for and gems that I have purchased during my life. What you see on the bench is over 99% natural gemstone and the rest is synthetic gems. So over the years, due to more intensive mining and supply and demand, high quality gems have been more difficult to acquire. So due to this lack of availability of higher quality gem material, this has led to an industry where more man-made gems have flooded the market. Not only have these man-made or synthetic gems flooded the market commercially, but from a home hobbyist fastening point of view, more of these gems are being cut also. And even over the years, quite often you see a lot of this synthetic material being demonstrated on YouTube where people actually cut it. And I've done this myself with cubic zirconia. From a personal point of view, as someone who cuts gemstones, a lot of this material has no inherent value. From a learning point of view and from people who enter competitions, a lot of this synthetic material is really wonderful because it keeps the cost down of course. But it's really important as a faceter myself that the type of material we actually facet is safe and environmentally friendly and it's important as an educationalist because I've been involved as an educationalist for over 20 years that the type of videos that I demonstrate on YouTube and instruct people that I make sure that the type of gem material is also safe for you guys to facet. And for those people who don't facet and you're simply consumers who wish to buy gems, it's really important that things are made clear to you guys that the type of gems you're buying are truly a gem in its own right. So let's talk about Faceted Learning 101 for those people who are beginners and even for those people who faceted for quite a few years and then later we can move on to talking about the product for the consumer. But for those people who are faceters, there is certain material you should never facet. And let's start with the obvious, and that is television glass. So TV glass, television glass, the modern name is tube light, should never be faceted because it has high levels of lead impregnated into the glass. In the old days, many of the faceters would learn to facet with TV glass. And most of the gem clubs in Australia now will not allow you to facet with it because of health and safety reasons. Comes in smoky colours and light green colours, but should be avoided at all costs. And even my dog knows this because it's not a gem. I wish it was a laughing matter, but seriously, it's not. You should never facet any glass, in particular borosilicate glass. Technically I've only faceted glass once in my life and that was obsidian and I actually did wear a mask but look I would not recommend that anyone would ever facet glass and particularly this borosilicate glass. As you can see what I'm holding in my hand appears to be a huge gem and it's actually made out of borosilicate glass and this is not a gem by the way but it has no intrinsic value it's worth $15. A lot of this boron silicate glass comes out of China these days and it looks quite impressive as I'm twirling it around and it's safe to drink out of and to hold but when you're grinding it down it's got lots of nasties in it such as boron oxide and boron trioxide. Such chemical components when broken down and are inhaled or ingested are highly dangerous to your kidneys and liver and should be avoided at all times as a faceter. Let me take you on a brief tour of some of the gems that I've acquired and then we'll discuss some of the issues with some of the other synthetic gems that are available. But Topaz, as you can see, this has been my number one gem. It really is a faceter's dream. Um, the clear Topaz, although I found quite a bit myself, to buy is relatively inexpensive. It's not the cheapest gem around, 
but it polishes well and cuts quite well. As you move into these lighter blues from Australia and even from Tanzania, you pay more. But then once you get into the darker blues, yes, you do start paying quite a bit. I thought I would mention Topaz first because Topaz is a true gem and it has true inherent value. Unlike this type of synthetic gem, which is called Christonite, which is made in Australia, a lot of faceters have been pumping this product and even on YouTube because it's relatively inexpensive and it comes in a range of different colours. From a price point of view it's only $5 to $25 say for this bicolored type of gem. But at the end of the day it's a no brainer. I think I'd rather spend my money on Topaz. Christonite is also the type of synthetic gem that I wouldn't want to sell to anyone unlike this Zambian amethyst which is really expensive but it's like the Rwandan it has deep dark blues and then of course the cheaper amethyst which comes from Brazil is also a great gem. Talking about amethyst here's an image of hydrothermal quartz that looks like amethyst and a lot of faceters like to learn to cut their gems on and it's good for learning design but I wouldn't want to be faceting this myself a because it's actually not worth a thing and I don't sell gems to people but I would never sell this to anyone in fact I wouldn't even have my wife wear it unlike synthetic sapphire or moissanite that would be different but this stuff no, not worth anything so let's continue on with the tour of my gemstones and here you see umber garnet which is actually worth something a nice garnet not too dark and I bought a little stockpile of those but I thought I would talk about if you're a faceter or if you're buying gems let's start with the faceting you're a faceter you spent many thousands of dollars on a faceting machine and equipment and all of a sudden you know you've learnt the art form is there any point to cutting something that's worth nothing apart from learning design composition for gemstones and to practice for design or for competition cutting it doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense to be cutting gems with thousands of dollars worth of equipment that are worth absolutely nothing from a consumer point of view a lot of these gems are starting to flood the market and a lot of people who love to buy gemstones will find themselves buying what they think is a gem when probably it's not really a gem and it has no value talk about flooding the market here is a glass filled ruby that I will not be fastening it's just a specimen piece but has no value unlike this particular gem which is specitite which I showed in my last video actually I bought another consignment of these because this is a gem that eventually you won't be able to find much of in the future because the resources are already starting to diminish and that in itself also becomes another issue as we have diminishing supply of natural gems the consumer is also going to find that the quality of the gem and the quality of the cutting of the gem is not going to be that good either so as a gem cutter and as my gem stockpile increases I start to target gems that are harder to find more valuable because I'm not buying as many of course so you can actually save some money to invest in gems that have some net value whether you're faceting for family or friends or if you plan to sell but it makes more sense to be investing your time and effort into something that has intrinsic value and also as an educationalist for over 20 years now you want to encourage new faceters to set their goals high when it comes to cutting gems and cutting quality gems. I also understand that there are a lot of people out there who are learner faceters or people who have been faceting for many years who simply don't have the financial means to buy expensive rough material and I'm in the same boat also where I would love to be able to facet sapphires worth thousands of dollars but I simply don't have the financial funds to do that but what you can do is target natural gems that are freely available at a certain time when a new mine opens up and there's a flood on the market and you can stockpile a few of those and then just wait it out to another lot come onto the market so realistically most hobbyist faceters enthusiasts would struggle to facet more than one gem a week 
Maybe you could facet too if you're cutting smaller gems from four to six millimeters, seven millimeters, because you're not doing it commercially. But once you start cutting the larger gems, about a 10 mil, 15 mil or more, it takes a lot more time. So while it's taking all that time, you will literally be building up a little stockpile and like this, what I've got here, these are just quartz crystals, but even quartz has some intrinsic value. You start faceting large pieces of quartz and they're actually worth something and you're not cutting garbage. Of course, these are just personal opinions as there may be thousands of faceters in the world who are very happy to facet whatever comes along and whatever they can afford. But you also have to be mindful and diligent that there is material out there that can be faceted but is also detrimental to your health. So hopefully some of my subscribers and people who are interested in faceting have learned something and taken something out of the information I've expressed on this video. And also if you're a consumer, maybe you've also benefited from learning a little bit about synthetic gems. So until next time everybody, I'll see you in the next video. Take care and it's bye for now.